Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Monday, August the 17th. Today is the day the LCMS commemorates the life of Johann Gerhard, a theologian. We'll hear more about him in a few minutes. Uh, he is probably my absolute very favorite uh, Lutheran theologian, Lutheran author of the, uh, the Golden Age. Let's go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Our New Testament, Old Testament reading this morning is from Second Samuel chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you could, should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you whenever you went, and have cut all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity... I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the son of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words, and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. Our writing today is from Johann Gerhardt, from a little book he wrote called uh, Meditations on Divine Mercy, which is uh, available, I think it's a CPH, it might be a CPH, um, but it is available. I have a copy if anybody would like to, to flip through it sometime. It's uh, Everything he writes is really good, but he has a lot of uh, fantastic devotional materials that I think he would enjoy reading some of. He says... O Lord, to you be honor and glory and blessing and thanksgiving, Revelation 7.12. O 
You not only mercifully receive me when I repent, but also grant me the ability to keep from sinning and to live a life more free from error. What good would it be to be free from sickness if a worse relapse followed? What good would it be to be absolved from sin unless the grace is given to live a pious life? You, most faithful God, perform the duties of a faithful and skillful doctor in healing the mortal wounds of my soul. You heal them by the wounds of your Son. There is danger that the healed wounds will be reopened, but your Spirit prevents this with grace like a poultice. After receiving the forgiveness of sins, so many people return to their former way of living. By repeating their sins, they offend God all the more grievously. We see so many who were freed from the yoke of sin only to return to the bondage that once held them. So many of those who have been led out of the spiritual Egypt look back to its fleshpots of carnal pleasures. Exodus 16.3 After recognizing Christ, they flee the defilement of the world but become entangled in it again as they return to their former evil ways. 2 Peter 2.20 they were freed from the bonds of Satan through conversion. Trapped again by Satan's bonds, they hold fast to the deception of evil spirits. Their last state is surely worse than their first, Luke 11:26. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, for them to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them, 2 Peter 2:21. They are like dogs that return to their vomit or like pigs that wallow in muck after they are washed. 2 Peter 2.22 The same can happen to me if you do not keep me on the good path through your powerful grace and the effective working of your Holy Spirit. The same evil that captured them attacks me. The same world that seduced them entices me. The same flesh that secured them lures me. Only your grace protects me against these attacks and furnishes me with the power necessary for victory. Your strength supplies the power I need in my weakness. 2 Corinthians 12.9 You give my spirit the strength to restrain the passion of the flesh. Whatever is good in me comes from you, the font of all good things, because in me, by nature, there is nothing but sin. I have to acknowledge that all the good works I do, which are nevertheless impure because of the corruption and imperfection of my flesh, are gifts of your grace. I will give you thanks forever because of your immeasurable gift to me. Amen. A little bit about Johann Gerhardt. lived uh, between 1582 and 1637, was a great Lutheran theologian in the tradition of Martin Luther and Martin Chemnitz. Martin Chemnitz lived from 1522 to 1586, Luther, of course, 1583 to 1546. And Johann Gerhardt was one of the most influential of the 17th century dogmaticians. His monument, monumental Loci Theologicae, 23 large volumes, is still considered by many to be a definitive statement of Lutheran orthodoxy. Gerhardt was born in Quedlinburg, Germany. At the age of 15, he was stricken with a life-threatening illness. This experience, along with guidance from his pastor, Johann Arndt, marked a turning point in his life. He devoted the rest of his life to theology. He became a professor at the University of Jena and served many years as the superintendent of Heldberg. Gerhard was a man of deep evangelical piety and love for Jesus. He wrote numerous books on exegesis, theology, devotional literature, history, and polemics. His sermons continued to be widely published and read. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy Bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers, bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church, and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church in the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations, and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you, and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy, give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. Most High God, we owe you great thanks that in the sacred mystery of the Supper you feed us with the body and blood of your Son. May we approach this heavenly meal with true faith, firmly convinced that the body we eat is the one given into death for us, and that the blood that we drink is the blood shed for our sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.